All right. Here we go. We are officially live. We are taking over the Birthright Israel Foundation page. I'm so excited about this. This is going to be a lot of fun because I would love for everyone watching to know about my individual experiences with the Birthright Israel Foundation, um, specifically as a um, alumni, as someone who's been on the trip myself, and then also to give you a really unique perspective as someone who's worked with dozens of alumni as their speaker coach. So what I've done is helped people articulate their individual stories. What is it about the birthright experience? What did it mean to them and how they can articulate and tell those stories and condense them down into a short little thing. So I'm super excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I want to share some things with you that I've never, ever, 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 ever shared publicly before. So I'm going to show you some things that literally no one's ever seen, like ever. And I'm super excited to share them with you. So with that said, let's jump in. If you are watching live or on the recording, please put any questions you have in the comments. Please put anything about what I'm saying in the comments. I, I'll do my best to get to them. And if I can't answer it, somebody else much smarter than me will be able to. So allow me to address uh, the elephant in the room. There's a, a 800 pound gorilla that typically is in the room whenever I walk into anything that is a Jewish event. There are questions that typically get asked. How, well, how is that dude Jewish? Is that dude Jewish? Did he convert? There's all these questions that go on. Listen, it's, 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 it's common because I know that what I physically look like probably doesn't fit the if you were to close your eyes and think of a Jewish male, you probably don't open your eyes and look at and see someone like me, right? That's just the transparency of it. Though there are many, 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 many of us that exist in the world who are Jews of color. Um, as my friend Jared Jackson, he has a great organization, he calls it, there are Jews in all hues. So we all do represent so many different stratifications of the color sphere, but typically, like, I, I get it. Like, I'm not the normal cup of tea. Um, that people see. So because of that, that's been a interesting part of my unique connection to my identity as a Jew. So here's how it shows up. My mom is a Ashkenazi Jew, born in New York, you know, but European roots. And my dad is a Jamaican man, um, great guy. So I like to call myself Jamaican because I got the Jamaican and come, you get it. You, you get it, Jew making. Just, just even if you don't get it and it's not funny, please act like it is funny. It means a lot to me. Okay, so it 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 was a big part of my identity growing up in this um, mixed duality of an identity, right? So I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, a predominantly African American neighborhood where there weren't many people who, who, one, had a black dad and a white mom. So that, that was unique. And there was way less people who were brown and also Jewish. Um, besides me, there was one other guy, it was my brother. <laughs> so there wasn't, we didn't have a big, you know, a big kind of uh, just pool to relate to, you know. And my mom, it was really important to her that I had a Jewish identity, you know, and she is definitely Jewish in her identity. And, you know, that's important to her, but she's not very on the religious side. She's not very on like, you know, keeping kosher or going to Shabbat or any of that stuff. But her Jewish identity was important. So she wanted, you know, my brother and I to have that strong Jewish identity. So as a kid, I would go to places like, you know, summer camp. I went to a great summer camp called Surprise Lake Camp, and it was a Jewish summer camp. And you know, went to after school programs and stuff. But, you know, I always felt like I was the uh, the other. I mean, very transparently speaking, I always felt like there was everyone who was there and then there was also me. It was very rare that I felt like I was part of it. Now, that could have been part of my own mental construct and that could have been part of, you know, 
realities of it, but that's my experience and that's how I experienced it. So um, at that camp I went to, Surprise Lake Camp, I got bar mitzvah. So they had a really cool program to get bar mitzvah and it wasn't going to happen uh, for me if the camp didn't offer it. But I really genuinely thought that bar mitzvah meant like Jewish graduation, meaning I'm done, like I'm good, like I don't got to I, I, I put in my work, I got my college degree, I got my bachelor's, I got my master's, I don't have to do this school thing no more unless I want to, and I, I didn't want to, you know? Uh, so pretty much after that, my my Jewish identity was always something that I would say was was there, and I wouldn't deny it. I would never say I wasn't Jewish, but I wouldn't bring it up, and most people would look at me and never say anything, so it was no problem. So this is what it was. And it's funny how things happen like over here and then have this tie in to the back end of it. Okay. So there was a, a young lady who was a very dear friend of mine who went to the same summer camp as me. She said, Hey, Arel, you should come over, um, uh, you know, and, and have a Shabbat dinner. And I was like, what's this Shabbat dinner? And she was like, there's free food. And I'm, I was a college student, so I was like, hot dang, let's do it. So you got to keep this in mind. This is a girl that I went to summer camp with. Haven't seen her since I was like 14 years old. We just happened to go to the exact same college, right? We recognized each other. It was really cool. It was, it was all coincidence. She invites me to this Shabbat dinner experience. And there I meet a lot of cool people. And that's when the idea of birthright first got kind of floated around. You know, it was really like right away, people were talking about, you hear about this free trip, this free trip to Israel. Now, I went way back in the day. Now, whenever I say the year that I went on Birthright Israel, it's shocking because it was a long time ago. It was 2004, 04, not 14, 04, way back in the day. So it was brand new of an idea. So these people are talking about, yo, there's this trip, there's this trip. And I was like, man, listen, I'm not going on that. You know, there was no, there was no way he was going to get me to go on that, that experience. It just, because I'm like, yo, I know what happens in Israel. They blow people up in Israel. You gonna, you gonna send me, oh, I get it. You gonna send me on this free trip so I can go get blowed up in another country? No. So it was just like, all right, well, you know, that's for other people. And what's fascinating is that for, for the longest experience, that was an other thing for me. And it was not that I was being othered in this case, because I was being invited on it. I was saying, there's no way someone like me is going. Because I had all these thoughts of like, I'm going to go to Israel and I'm going to tell them I'm Jewish. And they're going to look at me and be like, no, you're not. And then, you know, you have all these thoughts of like foreign countries and their prisons being way worse. And then I'm going to be this like person that they arrest because they I'm trying to claim to be some kind of Jew. So I remember it was fascinating. We, we, we took the, uh, I'm, gonna say, I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself because it was fascinating. But uh, obviously... I'm not spoiling anything. I, I went on the experience, so I'm gonna tell you how I got on it. But what was fascinating is I remember when I was going through the airport security to get into Israel. I was so nervous because I was like, "There's no way they're gonna believe that I'm Jewish. Like they're gonna think I'm lying, and then all this stuff, and they're gonna whatever." Right. So long story short, um, I decided to go on the trip um, because I convinced my brother to go with me, and we had this incredible experience there as him and I as a brother. But what was really cool was getting to see um, this one gentleman. Uh, he was a, a brown person who was in Israel, and I was so excited to meet him. He's Jewish. And I go, oh my God, I'm so excited to meet you. You know, he's Israeli, so he's like, why? You know how Israelis be. They come be like, what, why are you excited to meet me? I was like, dude, like, we have this moment. You're brown, I'm brown, we're Jews. And he said something that was just one of the most powerful things that, you know, we, that, that does, that's not what happens in Israel. Like, it's not brown, Jew, or Jew, you're just Jewish. And I found something that I'm so excited to share with you. This is actually a picture of me. That's me right there when I had hair. I, my name's Arel. I call this hair Rel because I had hair. Okay, okay, bye. Anyway, so this is this amazing picture that was actually taken. So this is my brother right here. This is the soldier, and that's me with this guy here, right? That's my fraternity hand symbol there, some thumb fraternity hand symbol. And to meet him, like, literally was this, like, incredible light switch moment that changed so much 
about how I saw myself and my identity, right? And then we got to do cool things. We went to like um, the Dead Sea. This is actually salt from my birthright Israel trip. They gave us all these big old Coca-Cola bottles, I think. And I remember I took salt and I took another one and I put some water in it. I put a little salt in it because I thought you were supposed to in a little bit of the sea. And I literally have taken this with me wherever I've gone. And it's been a, a true part of taking Israel with me wherever I go. Now, what happens is this incredible um, movement. There's this momentum that gets created that for me happened because of, you know, a gentleman like this that was part of the trip and not part of the trip. And to be able to grab something like this, which was not part of the trip, but part of the trip. And my my light bulb went off and it, it took me on an entire path of embracing this idea of being Jewish at a deep level. You know, now I have two sons. Um, they are, they go to Hebrew day school. We go to Shabbat services. I have an incredible wife. She's Jewish and we, we have this incredible connection with each other. And what I've realized is fascinating about my personal story, but also the story of working with so many other alumni is this. With all of the stories, they were all like mine. It, not all, I shouldn't say that. That's too strong of a statement. Most of them were like mine. Where alumni say things like, well, I didn't think they would accept me. Big one. It's maybe because they got tattoos everywhere. Maybe it's because they have um, a certain look to their face. Maybe they have a certain uh, sexual orientation or political orientation or whatever it is. There's this belief that I've seen over and over and over again from people that say they're not going to accept someone like me. I'm not really Jew. I'm Jewish, right? The same belief that I had. Now, here's what's fascinating. Mine was because of the color of my skin. Others is because of their religious practice. Others is because of their belief system or their, their, their tattoos. But what happens is that somehow on this trip, this magic moment happens. And I've heard an incredible amount of people say things like uh, alumni. It's almost verbatim where they'll say, well, I don't know if my experience is like everyone else's experience. Mine is really unique. And I go, okay, what was it? And then they talk about how there was this magical moment that shifts their perspective in how they see themselves and how they see their Jewish identity. Now, here's the beautiful thing. What that moment is, is unique to each person. But the fact that it happens is exactly the same. There is some incredible magic and mojo to the, the experience that either something they plan creates that mental switch, or you just happen to run across someone that wasn't part of the itinerary that creates that mental switch. There was a one gentleman, his name is Corey, he has this incredible moment where he talks about being in the marketplace and he loves the Mets. And there was a dude with a Mets hat on and he runs over to do with the Mets hat and he's like, hey man, you like the Mets? He's like, hey, you like the Mets? And they have this conversation and the guy says to him, hey, welcome home. And for some reason that impacts him in this incredibly deep way. And he realizes this Jewish people, Israel is his home and he never had that connection before at that deep level. So that's not part of the itinerary, right? but it's part of the experience. And it's just incredible for me to think, oh, I had this unique experience, but that unique experience is actually part of the process. Now, what it is and how it is, you know, there's one lady who just was uh, incredible. She just had no connection with her whatsoever. She only went on it because her sister was going on it. And she went there to support her. And because of it, she got so connected. She never thought she was going to, uh, you know, for her, marry a Jewish guy. She didn't care. But then it became important to her. But not only become important to her, she met an Israeli guy. And literally, he was the one. It's not like she forced it in. But, you know, if she didn't go on it, she wouldn't have had the mental switch to say that even like the idea of uh, just marrying someone and keeping that, that culture is important to her. You know, and everyone comes from a different place and everyone has a different viewpoint. But it's magical when something clicks then it changes you how you see the world. And when you change the way you see the world, the way that the world occurs to you changes. And the last thing I'll say uh, before we end here on time is, you know, for me, being a part of the Birthright Israel experience, you know, many moments impacted me. But meeting this guy who wasn't really even part of the itinerary changed my life. And, 
getting to hold on to a piece of the land with me. Like I've had this for, you know, going on 16 years now, right? Yeah, 16 years. You know, that stays with me and it allows me to impart it to my kids and make that connection, that shared identity. One of the biggest things that I think is so powerful is when we can have a shared identity, a shared belief system, we can connect and bond even if we disagree on so many other things because there's something that holds us together. And I think that's what Birthright Israel Foundation does at an incredible level. And I'm, I'm grateful to see all these unique experiences from so many different alumni, from middle America, from the South, from you know California, all over, coming in with this belief that no one's gonna get me, they won't understand me. And then being on this magical experience and having that like twit, that just looks, that perspective shift. And then it impacted them long. So as we move into this high holiday season, I know that Rosh Hashanah is going to be different for all of us. But what I will say is on behalf of myself and behalf of the alumni everywhere and my friends at the Birthright Israel Foundation, I want to wish you uh, La Shana Tova. And most of all, thank you for continuing to believe in Birthright Israel Foundation. It's, it's the mission of this organization to create moments like mine constantly over and over and over again. And if you want to learn more about Birthright Israel, you know, go to birthrightisrael.foundation or you can look in the comments. You can check the comments for a URL and learn more about it. If you're someone who's thinking about going on it and waiting for the next one when it's healthy and available, that will happen. If you're someone who is looking into just supporting a great organization, I can tell you there's nothing more important than shifting someone's perspective so that they can be part of a shared identity. And, and I just am living proof that that's real. So thank you all. I hope that you have a meaningful high holiday season, however you are able to do it. And I hope that all of us can have a shift in how we see the world so that we realize that drop by drop, step by step, brick by brick, we can create and build something with every action and every moment that we have to do so. So thank you for spending a few moments with me to hear my story and may you create something truly magical with every day. Peace out. My name's Aurel Moody. I'm the only Aurel Moody in the world, by the way. So if you ever wanna learn more about me or what I'm doing, all you gotta do is Google Aurel Moody or put it into social media. I'm the only one that show up. It's easy to find me. If you wanna find me, you don't find me. It's cause you're not looking. Unless you're a crazy stalker type person, then don't find me. I'm not gonna appreciate that kind of experience. But if you're a cool person, reach out. We'd love to hear what you think about this. Take care, everybody.